Welcome to lesson 3.4, fractions, decimals, and percents again. We're going to be working with multiplying of decimals today. And you have to learn how to multiply one or two digit multipliers without the use of calculators, which means you're not going to be able to use your calculator to actually do the work. You could actually do the calculations using, uh, you can use a calculator to check it, but you're not allowed to use a calculator to do it. Now, the textbook uses base 10 blocks to multiply decimals, and that's back starting based on grade 6. And back in grade 6, we did a lot of work on the different ways of multiplying the five different ways, and uh, we all came to the same method at the end, which was using the left to, so the right to left method. So that's what we're going to start off with, rather than going back and redoing all that. So to multiply decimals, you really have some very simple steps involved. First off, you take the two decimals that you're multiplying, and you ignore the decimal, sort of in, in, in a way, kind of erase it in your brain for temporary point, and then multiply the numbers. Then once you know um, what the answer is, you can use estimation to find out where the decimal goes, or you can use a, uh, a method where you just count the number of digits to the right of the decimal and make sure that your answer has uh, the same number of digits. Then you place the number, the, de the decimal in place. And then that's basically all you have to do. So let's take a look at an example. What is the product of 4.8 and 3.6? Note that the word product is the result of multiplication. So I'm asking you to multiply 4.8 times 3.6. Now, what I want you to do first off is to imagine for a second that 4.8 and 3.6 don't have decimals. They have just 48 times 36. So let's do some multiplying. So we're going to multiply everything by 6 first. So this is your first multiply. You're going to multiply 6 times the 8, and then the 6 times the 4. So six time, 4 times 8, if you remember your calculations, 6 times 8 is 48. Put down the 8, carry the 4. Now, 6 times 4 is 24. Now add the 4. So your first line is 288. Now, the 3 is in the tens place. If you want to multiply 8 by 30, you can do that. 30 times 8 is 240, but there's an easier way to do it. Since everything that ends in a multiple of 10 ends in a 0, or sorry, every multiple of 10 ends in a 0, and 30 is a multiple of 10, you can just take and put that 0 down to begin with, and then just multiply 3 times 8. 3 times 8 is 24, put down the 4, carry the 2. And of course, 3 times 4 is 12, plus this 2 is 14. So now you can add the numbers that you have here. 4 and 8 give you 8. 8 and 4 give you 12, carry the 1. 2 and 4 and 1 gives you 7. And of course, the 1 has nothing above it here, so it just stays as a 1. So we have 1, 7, 2, 8. So now the next step is to put the decimal in. There's two ways of doing this. One is you can take a look at 4.8 times 3.6. This is close to 5. This is close to 4, which means 4 times 5 is 20. You have to place the decimal in the 1728 so that it's closest to 20 as you can get. So that will mean it goes to here. If you don't know how to do that or you're having trouble with your multiplication skills, what you can do is count the number of digits to the right in each factor. One here, one there. There's two, which means that your final answer has to have two also, and then place the decimal accordingly. So you get 17.28. Both of those will put the decimal in the right location. All right. Now, so this, that's what this part down here is. There's a total of two digits here. So when you go to the next page, um, you place the digit in right there. Oops, sorry. All right. So we need the decimal to be between the 7 and the 2. That's just kind of previewing. So the product here of 4.8 times 3.6 is 17.28. How does that work for the next one? Well, what is the product of 3.7 and 1.45? So your first goal is to take 3.7, forget about the decimal, and treat it as a 37. The 1.45, forget about the 1.45, and treat it as a 145. And you have to multiply this. So that's what I'd like you to do first. Pause the recording and then multiply 145 by 37 without a calculator. Okay. Your first goal is to multiply everything by the 7. 7 times 5 is 35. Put down the 5, carry the 3. 7 times 4 is 28. And this 3, 28 plus 3 is 31. So put down the 1, carry the 3. 7 times 1... 7 plus this 3 is 10, so your first line is 1045. 
Now we're going to multiply by 3, 30, so put down a 0 so that I can multiply by 3 instead. 3 times 5 is 15, carry the 1. And then 3 times 4 is 12 and 1 is 13, put down the 3, carry the 1. And 3 times 1 is 3 and this 1 is 4, so there's where I get the numbers. And now the last step is to add them all up. 5 and 0 is 5, 1 and 5 is 6, 0 and 3 is 3, and 1 and 4 is 5. And now we have to go back up here and count the number of decimals. I've got one, two, three digits to the right, so I have to have three digits to the right on my answer. So that means that here's the first one, here's the second one, here's the third one, so my decimal's got to be there. So my answer is 5.365. Now, I want to warn you, if you were to put this down on a test or a quiz, I'm going to give you zero marks. This does not tell me that you know how to do it. You have to show me all of the work. That includes all the carrying, all the borrowing, every line that you do. If you don't show me this information and show me this work, I have no proof that you did it. And the goal here is for you to do it without the use of a calculator. So you have to make sure that you show me that. Otherwise, you get nothing. Okay, Bob went to the store and purchased four bags of assorted candy. Each bag cost a buck forty-seven. How much change would Bob get from a ten-dollar bill? So here's your first goal. I want you to calculate the cost of the bags of candy. So pause the recording and find out what that cost is. So our first goal is to make one hundred one dollar and forty-seven. You make one dollar and forty-seven cents. Forget about the, the decimal. Treat it as one hundred and forty-seven. The 4 is just 4, there's no decimal involved, so it's going to be 147 times 4. So 4 times 7 in this case is 28, put down the 8, carry the 2. 4 times uh, 4 is 16, and this 2 is 18, so put down the 8, carry the 1. And 4 times 1 is 4, plus this 1 is 5, so we have 588. Now, go back over here, we have two decimals to the right only, so the cost here is $5.00 and 88 cents. So there's two decimals there. So in terms this placement of the product, this gives us $5.88. Now, we need to calculate the amount of change he gets. Now remember, he gave him a $10 bill. So we have to subtract from 10. Okay, so here's 10, and here's 588. This is just like the one we did Last lesson, we had to do all those borrowing. All right? So, zero take away eight cannot be done right here. It's not possible. So I have to go next door. There's nothing here. So I've got to go next door. There's nothing here. So I have to go next door. This becomes a zero. Now I have ten. Now there's enough here that I can borrow from for this one right here. So I borrow from that. That becomes nine. And now I have ten. I can now borrow from this. I have nine. And now I get 10 in the 1's place. So 10 in the 1's take away the 8 is 2. 9 take away 8 is 1. Put your decimal in. 9 take away 5 is 4. And there's a 0 here and nothing else, so it's 4.12. So Bob would receive $4.12 in change. All right. The cost of a carpet is $5 per square meter. How much would it cost Michaela to carpet the rectangular room that measures 6.9 by 10.42? So, first thing you have to do is calculate the area of the room. Now remember, it's a rectangular room, so to calculate the area of a rectangle, it's going to be length times the width. Okay, so in this case, your area is going to be equal to 6.9 times 10.42. Now, I'm going to give you a hint here. If you do it this way, you're going to have to multiply everything by the 2, everything by the 4, everything by the 0, and everything by the 1. It's a lot of work. It's easier to put the one with the most digits on the top. So, multiply that, pause the recording, and continue when you're done. Okay, so first thing we have to do is remember that we have no decimals in here. We'll get to those in a moment. Now, 9 times 2 is 18, carry the 1. 
9 times 4 is 36 and 1 is 37, carry the 3. 9 times 0 is 0 plus this 3 means I have 3, and 9 times 1 is 9. So the first line is 9378. Now I'm going to multiply by 60, put a 0 down. 6 times 2 is 12, carry the 1. 6 times 4 is 24, and 1 is 25, put down the 5, carry the 2. 6 times 0 is 0, and 2 means I have a 2 here. And 6 times 1 is a 6, and now I have to add everything. 8 and 0 is 8, 7 and 2 is 9, 3 and 5 is 8, 9 and 2 is 11, carry the 1. So your answer is 7, 1, 8, 9, 8. Now, if you place the decimals in place, go back over here and take a look. I've got 1, 2, 3 digits to the right of the decimals. So I have to have 3 digits to the right here. So the cost is going to be $71.89. Sorry, uh, sorry, it's not the cost, sorry. That's the area, 71.898 square meters, all right? Now, it costs $5 for every square meter. So calculate the cost by multiplying by 5 meters. So I need you to take 7, 1, 8, 9, 8, and then multiply it by 5. So pause the recording and do that. Okay, so now, let's see how we did. 5 times 8 is 40, put down the 0, carry the 4. 5 times 9 is 45, and 4 is 49, so put down the 9, carry the 4. 5 times 8 is 40, and 4 is 44, put down the 4, carry the 4. 5 times 1 is 5, and 4 is 9, nothing to carry, and 5 times 7 is 35. Now, there are one, two, three digits to the right of the decimal, so I have to have one, two, three digits to the right, so there is my decimal. So the cost of carpeting this room is $359.49. Now, just a quick sort of up to, sort of clue, what would have happened if you had 359.487? for a cost. Now remember, you cannot have hundreds or thousands of a dollar. So you can only have two decimal places when you're working with money. So this 7 would cause that to become up to 359.49. Okay, so remember that if whenever you're working with money, if you end up getting three decimals or four decimals or five decimals, you always have to round it off to two. Okay, so get to work on the assignment. If you have any questions, review the, the video and watch it again. If not, you come and talk to me, and I'll try to straighten out whatever issues you have.